The Boston Celtics seem to have finally adjusted to life without Larry Bird. However, they're not taking anything for granted. You can't come in and take people lightly for sure. Uh, you know, Miami's an upcoming team, and they play, they play real hard. But Miami couldn't stop the suddenly rejuvenated Celtics from taking control. Long lead pass, Kevin Gambo! And a foul! So the Celtics make it five in a row and nine of their last 11. We're nearing the end of the season. We want to get the best position that we can be come playoff time. Uh, and it's nice to see that we're, you know, kind of picking ourselves up and, and everybody's picking everybody up. Continuing their homestand against the Dallas Mavericks, the Celtics extended their winning streak to six and again received contributions from a variety of players on both ends of the floor. Great steal by Gamble. Up ahead, Sherman Douglas. We've been playing some good unselfish basketball. It's not just one guy doing it. We have, you know, five or six guys that are, that are playing good. Finally, at the Celtics' second home in Hartford, the Washington Bullets seemed loose and ready. And just when it seemed the streak was over, D. Brown saved the day. Six seconds left. Here's the game on the line. Brown! And the Celtics win by one. Also making a strong playoff drive are the red-hot Atlanta Hawks and their high-flying leader, Dominique Wilkins. Meek has scored 30 or more points in eight of his last 10 games. But against Dallas, he notched only 28, while five others scored in double figures. Our final score tonight, the Atlanta Hawks 125, the Dallas Mavericks 107. As long as we stay consistent and play with enthusiasm and emotion out there on the floor, because this is what this team has to do to win. We have to play good team defense. We want to win and play on a consistent basis. Team, there's Adam Keith getting awesome. a hand on the ball again, hitting the deck, but Wilkins oh, yes. Dominic over to oh, Stacey yes. Alvin. 106-96, Atlanta the final. Hawks have won nine of their last 10. After knocking off Houston, Miami came into town. Again, Wilkins led the way with 37 points, while Mookie Blaylock dished out 16 assists. Nice pass! So the Hawks make it 10 of their last 11. But if the Hawks have any visions of catching the Bulls, they'd better think again. Chicago's on a tear, and they started the week off taking care of Minnesota. Scotty for the slam! As usual, the Bulls were led by Michael Jordan, who had 34. The world champion Chicago Bulls get the win. Bill Jackson's world champion's next game fits to Philly, who just couldn't handle Jordan. Michael took off for 43 points, en route to an easy win over the Sixers, and also found his teammates for easy scores. Jordan on a three. Oh, my goodness. Unfair to have someone on the other team that good. Next, the Shaq tried to bully the Bulls. But Chicago just carved right through the magic. With Scotty Pippen and Horace Grant playing bigger roles to support Jordan, Chicago pulled away for the team's sixth straight win. And the world champs are rolling. While the Bulls look to defend their title, in this week's news, notes, and quotes, we find the Minnesota Timberwolves making a decision they hope will improve the future of their franchise. Good bud. That's it. The T-Wolves made Sidney Lowe their permanent head coach with a three-year contract that runs through the 96th season. Well, I'm happy for Sid. Uh, I think he deserves a chance because he really works at coaching. Uh, he's very energetic. He's very enthusiastic. And in turn, we're going to have to get this thing turned around and win some games. In other coaching news, the Cavs' Lenny Wilkins moved into third place on the all-time NBA coaches' win list with 858 lifetime victories. Coach, uh, you know, is very consistent. Uh, works hard and you know, he loves the game. That's why he's played out as long as he has. And Mark Price, the all-time leader in free throw shooting, is at 69 straight, threatening the record of 78 in a row. You know, anytime you're on the streak, you like to keep it going as long as you can. You know? uh, so I'm not going to be taught thinking about it or surely don't want to jinx myself at this point. You know, just want to keep the streak going. Coming up next, we take a look at the versatile power forward for the Nets, Derek Coleman. He's a force in this league, and I think everybody knows it. And we'll make sure you don't miss a beat in NBA Encore. Almost to the hoop. He's there. This week, Derek Coleman, the Nets' versatile big man, holds court. The main attraction in New Jersey these days is a power forward who has the body of a center and the skills of a guard. Possessing an arsenal of offensive weapons, that's one of the league's most dead. Himself and lead the break for the Nets. Goes behind the back. Through the lane. Oh, you gotta love it. Rebound Derek Coleman. Coleman swings into the paint. So 
Woods goes up with a shot. Good and a foul. Eric Coleman is a one-man wrecking crew on that offensive glass. Blake Coleman on Mason. Goes to the fadeaway. What a package he is to deal with. Derek Coleman. The number one pick in the 1990 draft went through two roller coaster seasons prior to this year. Though the Nets won only 26 games his first season, he was named Coca Cola Classic Rookie of the Year. Then last season, the team improved, but all was not well with team chemistry. Enter Chuck Daly. I really felt great because I thought Chuck would bring more of a freelance style of basketball to the New Jersey area as far as just letting the guys go out and play and. Um, you know, and have fun with the game. And that's how it's supposed to be played, have fun with it. So um, I, I, I was just enthused about the whole thing. And since the change, Coleman has flourished in daily system. Adding discipline to his game, he's harnessed his unlimited potential. 40 seconds to go in the quarter. Ramil to Coleman, he's fouled, it counts. He'll go to the line. At my position, the power forward of, of old is just the, the post up, the dirty work guy. But um, Derek Coleman also has a finesse side to his game where um, guys that are usually my size, I can I have the advantage of taking them out because I handle the basketball so well out in the perimeter and, and do a lot of things with the basketball. Coleman not only displays the skills of a superstar. He carries himself with a certain bravado to match. He's got an interesting demeanor. I don't think he cares. And I think eventually it'll all come through because his abilities, you know, when he works on his game, keeps his weight down in the offseason. Uh, I mean, he's a, he's a force in this league, and I think everybody knows it. Now in his third season with the Nets, Coleman's graduated from a potential star to become one of the league's most dominant players. But those closest to him know that as long as he continues to tap his awesome reservoir of talent, even greater things lie ahead. He has to work on his game. It's only something that he's going to learn for himself, where he gets to the point where he can destroy people, get into the 30 range every night, which he's capable of doing. He is literally one of the best five players in the game. Six foot ten, likes to win, and growing as the power forward of the future. He can do it all. A real hot marquee matchup this week as the scorching Miami Heat take on divisional foes, the New Jersey Nets. Lately, the Heat have been hot at the Miami Arena. Rejuvenated by the return of Steve Smith to the starting lineup, Kevin Lockery's fortunes have turned, and the Heat have won 11 straight at home. Fittingly, Miami started strong. Ready down to four on the shot clock. That's the way Glenn the starting game. New Jersey's Chuck Daly was wary of an early blowout. But the Nets clawed their way out of a 14-point hole as the game turned into an aerial circus. Smith, as George takes a flop. Precision passing by Sam Bowie helped New Jersey stay within striking distance. A second quarter heat rally was triggered by some tenacious work on the boards by rookie Matt Geiger. Miami led by 11 at the break and started the second half like they were ready to put the visitors away. But the Nets weren't ready to give in to the oppressive heat. Chris Morris danced across the baseline and initiated New Jersey surge that brought them close. But you just can't hold down a great player like Derek Coleman all night. The Heat led by 16 back late in the second quarter. But this is the NBA. One run followed by another. With Coles on him. There's the double for Miner. Back to three. And here's Warren for Rice. Rice's rim rocker opened the gap for Miami and the faithful. And then moments later, he sealed the Nets' fate with a three point dagger that kept Miami's impressive streak alive. Well, wins in a row at home. The franchise's best ever home winning streak continues. And we also continue on as NBA Encore wastes no time in getting right in your face. Harper, baseline, and a foul. Go ahead, Felton. Show us how to finish. Gets the ball. Oh, oh, it's showtime, huh? Well, here's the shot. And the lane. Just in case you're wondering, we got some wild ones for you. So let's kick it off with Rex. Chapman. 
that's the same question we got for Hollywood Harper. Harper with oh. scoop. Oh. oh, man, is this guy hot stuff or what? Miner hanging. Oh. Oh. Another circus move for Harold Miner. And now for some personal favorites of mine. You might call it a passing fancy. We started off with the Suns. Frank Johnson. Zabalo. Mark Jackson on the dribble. And the lead for Harper. Back come the Knicks on the turnover. Starts dropping for Smith. And it's a four on one for the Jazz. As Liberty picks up the loose ball, he goes in, dishes off to Williams, who dishes off to Ellis. 